This 2025, everything changes, not because of politics, not because of climate change, but because of something that's doubling in power every six to nine months, artificial intelligence. I predict that the AI evolution of 2025 will make the AI of 2024 look like the Stone Age. And this is based on facts. In this video, I've compiled research from Goldman Sachs, venture capital fund experts speaking on Bloomberg, the product head from Google, Sam Altman, and Elon Musk to show you exactly what's coming. And it's more shocking than anyone expected. Let's jump in. Where are we in terms of consumer adoption, in terms of people actually putting return on investment, AI investment first? You're exactly right. Let me give a couple examples. AI changes over time. Uh, when I was an AI researcher a long time ago, we were barely scratching the surface of natural language processing and natural language understanding and the beginnings of computer vision. 2022, 2023, we're really about large language models and answering questions and, and really the advent of uh, modern AI. 2024 has been the year of agents. Mm. And, and what an agent is, is an AI that actually completes a task. You ask it to do something and it doesn't, doesn't just tell you how to do it, it does it for you. Uh, an example of an AI agent company is our own portfolio company, Expo. Uh, Expo was founded by the creator of GitHub Copilot, and they set out to create an agent for cybersecurity, uh, an extremely challenging and important space. And in a, a few months, they were able to develop an AI that can actually outperform some of the best penetration testers in the world. So this AI goes in and it attacks a website with the yeah. permission of the website provider, finds vulnerabilities, and actually reports it back and says, we have found these vulnerabilities. We've completed this entire task. That was 2024 for AI. It was all about agents. 2025 and beyond likely will be about swarms of AI agents, networks of AI agents, them working together and maybe even against each other mm. uh, to, to some result. Constantine, the swarm of AI agents, I feel there's a swarm of companies talking about AI agents, that we're about to have Salesforce numbers after the bell today, and they're all about agent force. At the same time, we mm -hmm. recently had one of your portfolio companies on Rocks, for example, which is also all about agents. How are, how are we going to see them cross-contaminate, work against each other, or see some win and some lose? Mm. Absolutely. The reason why people are so excited about agents is because the promise of AI completing tasks not every task, but many tasks, is so impactful. We really want AI to be able to do the work. You just mentioned Rocks, and Rocks is a great example of a, a company that is an AI agent, but an AI agent that actually includes the human in the loop. Rocks is not trying to cut the person out. They're actually trying to say, okay, you are a really good seller. You have really good human relationships with your buyers. Instead of trying to disintermediate that, we're gonna empower you with an agent. This agent's gonna do all the work and research for you. It's gonna get you prepared for that next meeting. And an example of them actually putting that theory into practice is they originally developed a technology that would auto-draft emails. And they actually had the ability to auto-send those emails. But they took that out and they found that when they actually kept the human seller in the loop, mm. performance was triple, three times as high. So there are companies where the agent's gonna do the entire task uh, likely in the cybersecurity space, like with Expo, there are companies where their AI agent's gonna do work for the person in order to augment them, like in the case of rocks. Constantine, you're a big thinker and you put out sort of trends and forecasts. Trend for us how many agent offerings we really need. How many public and private companies, how many horses such as rocks can you back? Well, it's just the beginning and early days for artificial intelligence. And look, the, the constraint is really our creativity. The amount of uh, opportunity for artificial intelligence is huge. And I'll give an example. Uh, two areas that are critical to all of us are healthcare and education. They have been areas where cost has gone up and up and up for decades. And a lot of reason for that cost increase is because of the cost of services. Right. Now that AI can actually complete some tasks, I really think that AI can come in and in the coming decades, not just the coming year, but in the coming decades, be a hero for those industries, drive down costs, and actually help us have a better educated, healthier population. 
So really, the sky is the limit for artificial intelligence and for AI agents and for networks of AI. Like it or not, and there's a lot of not out there, artificial intelligence is here to stay. 2024, a big year for so-called generative AI, that is chatbots and image makers and video creators. But as we gear up to enter a new year, here's a question, maybe even ChatGPT would be stumped. What next? We are joined now by a generative, <laughs> generative AI expert. His name is Sam Gregory. Sam. Remember how the smartphone changed everything in just a few years? That's nothing compared to what's about to happen. Goldman Sachs' his CIO says he's never seen anything like this, not even during the rise of cloud computing. And he says it's happening even faster. Listen to this. After a huge year for artificial intelligence, what is in store for next year? I don't know. <laughs> Kate Rooney probably knows because she read the Goldman Sachs reports. Right. Great to see you, Kate. Great to see you. Great to Thank be here you. in person, guys. Um, so I did speak to the bank's top tech executive. He shared his outlook on AI for next year. I spoke to Goldman's chief information officer, Marco Argenti, exclusively on the topic. He spent the bulk of his career at AWS, Amazon Web Services, and Nokia back in the day now handles Goldman's AI efforts. We first talked about what happened this year. He said right now in AI, it feels like the emergence of cloud when he was at Amazon, but faster. He says he's never seen anything like this in terms of the pace of development. He said the biggest surprise this year was this tech moving beyond things like chatbots into, into multimodal, which is pretty much a fancy way of saying AI that generates images and video. It says that next year, Fortune 500 companies are going to start to deploy this in a much more impactful way, and it eventually will evolve into what he calls a new hybrid workforce with AI agents working alongside people. You might think of a future uh, of a workforce where you're going to have ma managers that are going to manage both human employees and AI employees. You, you might have the role of, uh, you know, human capital management uh, functions that are going to become uh, human and machine capital functions that are going to be working on both evolving the career of humans and also evolving the career of AIs. Argenti says there will be an emergence of AI experts that have a very niche, specific type of industry knowledge. So think of banking, for example. In the case of Goldman Sachs, he is expect expecting major robotics breakthroughs as well. Says AI safety is going to become a bigger priority on company boards, not just for regulators. And then large language model commoditization, he says we're going to see, he described it as many cars, fewer engines. The engines here being the underlying models. As that happens, the data the companies train off, he says, are going to really start to emerge as an edge, guys. Is it going to change the world now? or Because it doesn't yeah. seem like it's quite ready for prime time yet. That's one of the big predictions. I think this is also part of the AI narrative and the valuation story, that if you, it's got to help margins at some point to, in order for this narrative to continue. So I think th there's a lot of pressure for this to actually start to impact normal companies, not just tech companies. If that doesn't happen, I think it takes some of the air out of yeah. what's going on here. All right. Well, it's going to be a fun year for you on the front line. <laughs> sure Rooney, lovely to have you here. By 2025, we won't just have AI assistants, we'll have AI employees. Let that sink in. Fortune 500 companies are already preparing for a hybrid workforce where human managers will oversee both human and AI workers. This isn't science fiction, it's next year's reality. But that's just the beginning. The real revolution is in AI agent swarms. Imagine not just one AI working on a task, but entire networks of specialized AIs working together and sometimes against each other to solve complex problems. We're talking about systems that can outperform human experts in cybersecurity, sales, and complex decision making. In spring of 2024, Elon Musk predicted that we'll see the beginnings of superintelligence by April 2025. He was laughed at and folks said he was only out to increase Tesla stock. Guess what? Every notable figure ended up talking about ASI before 2024 was over. And they talked about as if it was real, tangible, and coming. That is actually mind-blowing. Google's own AI product lead working on AGI actually said on X, we're on a straight shot to ASI, artificial superintelligence. He said this before 2024 ended on December 30th. Then Sam Altman, known for his measured approach, came out in 2024 talking about superintelligence and said it was a few thousand days away. Listen to him talking about what's coming in 2025 before the year 2024 was up. 
the next big question that we're all asking, I can't even believe we're just asking it two years later, and, and you actually just wrote about it. Um, you said that it is possible that we will have superintelligence in a few thousand days yeah. from now. Two years ago, did you think that? And when you say a few thousand days, I can do various versions of math on what that means. Well, I mean, there is wide uncertainty, and there's also different definitions of what superintelligence is. Uh, I, yes, two years ago, we thought we were on a pretty steep curve. I mean, we, we started OpenAI because we thought this was possible and maybe not that far away. And it has gone well, but we hoped it was going to go well. Like, we, we believed in deep learning as, as this unbelievable new discovery of humanity, and we thought it could go here, and we had a duty to get it here and to make it go well and to broadly share the benefits. But, yeah, we did think we could get here, and we still believe we can get here. It's not for sure. There's a ton of hard work, a ton of research and engineering still to do, but I think it's possible, uh, and I think it's possible not super far in the future. I expect that in 2025, we will have systems that people look at even people who are skeptical of current progress and say, wow, that, I did not expect that. That does change what? Like what? Um, agents are the thing everyone is talking about, I think for good reason. You know, this idea that you can give an AI system a pretty complicated task, like a kind of task you give to a very smart human that takes a while to go off and do and use a bunch of tools and create something of value. Um, that's the kind of thing I'd expect right. next year. And, that's like a huge deal. We talk about that like, oh, you know, this thing is going to happen. But that's like, that, if that works as well as we hope it does, that can, that can really transform things. Think about what this means. If we go straight to super intelligence, even the tough industries that have been resistant to change for decades, healthcare, education, legal services, are absolutely, completely transformed. As Dave Shapiro says, when it's faster, safer, better, cheaper, who's going to not adapt? Goldman Sachs predicts this will create entirely new job categories. AI specialists with deep industry knowledge, human AI integration experts, and AI safety officers at the highest levels of corporations. Here's what a lot of us forget. The AI you're using today, it's the worst it will ever be. Every single model from this point forward will be dramatically more capable than what you're using now. The pace of advancement is so rapid that even experts are struggling to keep up. 2025 isn't some distant future. It's here now. The question isn't whether this transformation is coming. It's whether you'll be ready when it arrives. Are you preparing for a world where AI agents become your coworkers? Where entire business processes are reimagined around AI capabilities? This isn't just another tech trend. This is the biggest shift in human capability since the Industrial Revolution. And unlike previous revolutions that took decades to unfold, this one is happening in months. Listen, I believe there's a massive wealth transfer about to happen, and it's attached to the cliff that occurs when you turn customized AI integrations on and entire jobs get wiped out. Companies that integrate AI early are seeing 25 to 100x better results. The ones that don't, they're getting left behind fast. Here's the thing. It's not about throwing more AI tools at your team and hoping something sticks. That's what everyone else is doing. The real magic, I believe it's in that rich gray area between the AI tools and your goals. It's about building custom AI bots and agents and connecting these customized tools to the right people in your organization for total streamlined automation and massive efficiency gains. That's exactly what we do at First Movers. We're not just another AI consultancy. We're a full service integrations team that builds custom AI solutions to automate your entire business. I'm talking push button marketing solutions, fully automated sales processes, content that nearly creates itself. We recently helped achieve a 9,900% increase in marketing visibility through a bot driven campaign, as opposed to all prior human campaigns. That's not a typo, 9,900% better. But here's what gets me excited. We're just getting started. If you want to become a first mover in your industry before your competition does, visit firstmovers.ai for a free discovery analysis. 
The future belongs to those who move first. The question is, will that be you? Let me know in the comments if you'd like to learn more about what we're building. I read every single one. Hit subscribe to stay ahead of these changes. I'm diving deep into how to prepare for this AI revolution and you won't want to miss what's coming next. I'm delighted you're here with me. I'll see you down the next AI rabbit hole.